Hi, I'm Anthony Ha with TechCrunch. I'm here with Sunil Paul, the co-founder and CEO of Sidecar. Um, and uh, so we, you just finished a panel that was uh, pretty pretty exciting. A little, a little bit of argument between you and, and the, re the regulators. Um, and and the, you know, you've had some news about that too. But um, maybe let's look at it from another direction. And where do you think you are actually going to be able to find common ground with some of these agencies? Yeah. I think that there is opportunity to find common ground. Uh, regulators do have, I mean, their sincere role, and I think actually many of the public servants that work in those uh, organizations, they do want to serve the public. I think the system sometimes keeps them from being able to do that, <laughs> but their kind of personal desire is to, is to do a good job and serve the public. So the public is definitely served when we've got more choice, when systems are safe, and, and that they're fair. Mm -hmm. And the system that Sidecar uh, pioneered really is one that is kind of inherently safe and fair. And it really has to do with the capability of social media. So we have this new phenomenon through smartphones and, and, and the social media and feedback systems that create inherent fairness and, and trust. I think eBay kind of pioneered all these kinds of systems, but now they're being widely deployed and the smartphone allows that kind of new capability to spread out into the world. So we, with the sidecar kind of idea, um, are taking that to transportation. And we think that regulators, once they understand uh, what we're up to and, and, and the benefits, the mm -hmm. environmental congestion and sort of public infrastructure benefits, they get it and they, they want to figure out something. And California has gone down that path. Uh, we're hopeful that Right. the PUC will end up with, with uh, a good, positive sort of positive outcome for society and right. not just protecting taxi cabs. Right. Um, so maybe you could take us a little bit behind the scenes of your decision-making process in the sense that I think when we look at these sort of, you know, battles that sometimes you guys have and other companies have, um, you know, I would imagine there's sort of, you have to find this balance between when you want to fight the agencies and yeah. when you want to try to compromise with them. How do you make that kind of decision? Well, first of all, we're building a national and then international company. And in order to be able to do that, in order to take advantage of what this technology allows, and um, you know, smartphone technology is not about uh, individual local jurisdictions. It right. is a nationwide international capability. So we have really premised the whole company on the idea that we are an information provider and provide a matching service. Others have taken an approach that, uh, where they're actually creating a dispatching service. And that might sound like a subtle uh, difference, but it's kind of the difference between a match.com and arranged marriage. Okay. And so I think in a dispatching system, regulators have appropriately greater control or should have uh, more control simply because the driver doesn't know where you're going, the passenger has no choice, prices are set, and uh, in, a, in a matching system like ours, there's kind of complete freedom, destinations required, driver and passenger have choice over who to, mm -hmm. who to uh, give a ride to. Um, and there's there's no set price. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you think that the especially at, the, at a local level, the regulators shouldn't be involved, or they should just be much less involved than they seem to think they should be? So we are creating a platform that, and that platform, uh, software service platform, uh, should not is not subject to local jurisdiction. Now we have no quibble with the idea that drivers who want to make a living uh, off of this platform they should be regulated. Mm -hmm. I mean. That's whatever the local regulation is. Right. Um, but uh, for those people who are, and in, in virtually every state, there are uh, rideshare, rideshare regulations that basically say if you're not making a profit and you're traveling incidental, so you know where the destination is of, of the passenger, you don't need a separate livery license and a separate commercial insurance to, right. to take those acts. Um, we created that version that is so convenient okay. that it competes with the taxi industry. And so the tax industry is not happy about it, and they use their leverage with regulators to, to try to crack down, like what happened over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And, and let's get, we'll get to that in a second, but, but let me ask one more question on this, which is um, just, you know, so, so how do way, you... It's not just the tax industry. There are other entrenched interests, okay. established players okay. that also use their leverage with the regulators. So how do you then, assuming that, that you can sort of get, you know, government agencies to kind of see your point of view on that. How do you get that sort of bigger clarity that it sounds like you're looking for where it's not just sort of a, a you know, jurisdiction by jurisdiction fight, but sort of a larger you know, decision on that? So there are um, clear federal 
uh, statements. Statements about antitrust, statements about the role of innovation and the inter internet. So the Federal Trade Commission, responsible for ensuring fairness, has uh, intervened in one case in, in Denver and um, has basically said, look, these local regulations should be data-driven, not driven by business model. And what's happening at all of these local jurisdictions is you have all these narrow prescriptive rules and they're all about the business model not about safety, not about a data-driven approach to safety or a data-driven model to fairness. And that's really the role of government, ensure fairness, ensure safety, mm -hmm. assuming that other systems can't handle it. Right. So that's the FTC and antitrust. 1996, Congress saw this new medium blossoming and said, look, let's make it safe for innovators to, to spread these services throughout the entire country without being sued or regulated at a local level. Um, this was happening. Uh, Prodigy, if, if you remember okay, Prodigy, vaguely, actually vaguely. got sued for, for something. And anyway, the point is that Congress, uh, you know, I think did a very uh, long-sighted thing, sometimes unusual for the halls of Congress, mm -hmm. but they did realize that this innovation is possible and you can have the innovation of the internet spread. Uh, Ed, Ed Markey was a, a leader in making that happen. So, so, that law basically says that if you're an information provider right. and you're publishing information like where you want to ride, where you're right. going, all that kind of stuff, you're not subject to local uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, uh, so the last thing I wanted to ask you about, you know, you, so, you, so we are in New York, you've, you've had you know, sort of an eventful weekend. Um, so can you just you know, maybe briefly tell us what, what happened this weekend and then sort of you guys were actually sort of announcing a kind of campaign, a social media campaign? Yeah, so um, basically two uh, drivers in the sidecar community over in Brooklyn uh, had enforcement actions uh, taken against them. And, um, you know, these are basically TLC. We've been in conversations with the TLC uh, we'd actually sent them a letter on Friday, uh, and on that same Friday, uh, we're not quite sure all the machinations of what happened okay. inside that organization, but basically the bottom line is that uh, Sandra um, had her car impounded. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next night, uh, a driver named Christy, um, you know, was surrounded by police, and I mean, both of these women are shaken up by the whole experience. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just normal folks. They're not... Right gypsy cabs they're not you know they're not trying to do something illegal what they're doing is fully legal and we of course will uh, help them defend and 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 deal with the situation um and so you're and, asking people now to, to, to try to get involved by yeah, tweeting I mean, basically if people if people take action politicians will listen mm -hmm. regulators may not listen but politicians will mm -hmm. listen and ultimately politicians are the ones that that make the rules and so if people want to see choice, and then they should do something about it, they can go to our blog. Um, we've got a small set of actions that you can take, mm -hmm. um, and you know, basically reaching out to their elected officials and say, "I want choice," mm -hmm. I, and, and sharing is something that I want to encourage because it's good for our city, it's good for our environment, and it's good for people in terms of offsetting their costs. And the other thing is, it's really it's a fun experience, like. <laughs> Like meeting people right. and no, chit chat. Side cards. Yeah. It's fun, yeah. yeah. Um, fair enough. Well, I wish you luck with that, and thank you for nice. joining us. It was great. Thanks.